Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for a character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for a cooler helmet next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Gorilla Grodd, because after making me build Captain Boomerang, the patrons threw me a bone and voted for this big old brainy boy. I really do try to make every video sound as passionate and excited as possible, but the stuff that really gets my gears turning isn't edgy white protagonist dude 452. It's the weird stuff. So without further ado, here's the mind control gorilla. Thank you so much patrons for voting for it. Hey everybody, Tulak here. Uh, kind of a fun surprise. Apparently Warner Brothers heard that I was a huge Gorilla Grodd fan and they reached out to me with an early sneak preview of their new Flash movie that's hitting theaters in 2022. Now this is all pre-visualized, but this is a scene with Gorilla Grodd in it. I'm so excited to share it for you. Here it is. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to have a dominant personality with the ability to impose our will on others. Next, we need to use the force with telekinesis skills to push and pull people from a distance as well as we do up close. Finally, you're a gorilla, so you should be pretty big and punch pretty hard. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch your intelligence and your strength scores. Intelligence will be number one. Psychic dude needs brain power. Even if Wizards of the Coast actually deleted the psychic wizard. We'll make it work. Strength next, gorillas are big and they hit very hard. Constitution after that, you're also incredibly thick. Again, that's just gorilla stuff. Take a shot of water. Every time I say gorilla, get hydrated. Follow that up with charisma. You're the big boss of Gorilla City, which I'm assuming is named after you and isn't the equivalent of living in Humanville. Wisdom is a bit low. Your animal handling is good, but your self-control is not. You like to eat people. We'll dump dexterity. You're not exactly stealthy or good at blending into a crowd. Gorillas are evolutionarily similar to humans, so I think variant human wouldn't work as well as a bugbear, but I had you going for a second. Bugbears get plus two strength and plus one dexterity, 60 feet of dark vision, a powerful build for doubled carrying capacity, long limbs to make melee attacks with 10 feet of range instead of five, and you can use some gorilla tactics for a surprise attack, letting you deal an extra 2d6 damage with an attack against a surprised target. You also get the stealth skill for free to help you land that, which, hey, remember five seconds ago when I said you're bad at hiding? That's just like, overall. For how big and gorilla shaped you are, you're pretty good, relatively speaking. We need to build our own background for athletics and animal handling, which actually is a background in Ravnica, but I couldn't find my Ravnica book, and I'm pretty sure that that background isn't animal that got brain powers from Science Helmet. We'll kick things off as a wizard because your mind is more important than your muscles. Technically, the brain is a muscle, so I guess it's not more important. It's just as important. Anyway, wizards get two skills from the wizard list. Arcana and Investigation would be nice ways to put your super smarts to use. Of course, when you sign up for wizard, you're mostly doing it for a giant spell list, starting with cantrips like Mage Hand, which will let you pick up objects weighing 10 pounds or less with a floating spectral hand for some at-will telekinesis. Message lets you whisper something to someone 120 feet away from you, and they can whisper back if you just want to have a little telepathic communication. Mending lets you put two pieces of something back together, helping you fix up your grotty armor, which you can't wear yet, but we'll get there. For first level spells, Charm Person forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, charming them for an hour if they fail. I'd like to remind everyone that charming isn't mind control, it just makes creatures friendly to you and gives you advantage on your charisma checks with them. But if you keep it reasonable with something like, bring me bananas, you'll be fine. We've got to work our way to getting the better mind control spells. Jump will triple your jump distance for a minute with your strength score already being pretty good. This will take the total distance to 45 feet per round if you dash to give yourself enough movement. That's much better. Catapult eats an object weighing five pounds or less at a creature, dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage if they fail a dexterity saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and intelligence modifier for some offensive telekinesis. I mean offensive as in for offense, not like your uncle at Thanksgiving. You also get arcane recovery, letting you recover an amount of spell slots on short rests equal to half your wizard level, so you shouldn't have to worry as much about running out of slots. 
It's worth noting that wizards can actually have six first level spells in their spell book at level one and get two more every level. But because I don't want this video to go on for forever, I'm just gonna take one spell per level and start off with the number of spells you can have prepared per day. Second level wizards can choose an arcane tradition and traditionally enchantment wizards like to bamboozle. Hypnotic gaze lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're charmed by you until the end of your next turn. They can't move and are incapacitated as well, effectively taking them out of the fight for a round, which is particularly effective when fighting the Flash. He is very fast. To keep yourself safer from his attacks, use the shield spell to add 5 to your AC as a reaction for a little telekinetic barrier. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Hold person lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature, paralyzing them for up to a minute if they fail, though they can re-roll it on each turn. While paralyzed, they'll automatically fail dexterity saving throws, so you can catapult a whole curio cabinet full of knickknacks at them while they're stuck. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement, round up constitution and intelligence for your saving throws to be harder to resist and to make you better at rolling saving throws for concentration. Speaking of, suggestion lets you suggest a harmless simple activity for someone to do, and if they fail a wisdom saving throw, they'll keep working at doing it for 8 hours or until they complete the task or until you drop your concentration. If charm person is go to the store and pick me up some bananas, suggestion is bring me every banana in the city. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Hypnotic Pattern forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures who can see a 30 foot cube of swirling magic that you create, charming them if they fail, incapacitating them, and setting their speed to zero until the spell ends in a minute, you drop concentration, or someone attacks them or wakes them up with an action. This is a phenomenal getaway option since there's no limit to how many people you can affect. Set it in the right place and you can have a whole central city block standing still for a minute. Sixth level enchantment wizards get instinctive charm, letting you use your reaction to make an enemy attacking you attack someone else instead if they fail a wisdom saving throw, provided there is someone else to hit. You can do this once per long rest, just because you can take hits doesn't mean you have to. To make more of your enemies attack each other, the enemies abound spell forces an intelligence saving throw on a creature, failing that they think everyone is their enemy and have to choose their targets at random, as well as making opportunity attacks whenever they can, meaning that even if everyone clears out from the duped Superman, he still will probably punch them. They can re-roll the saving throw when they take damage, but otherwise it's going to last for a minute depending on your concentration. 7th level wizards can learn 4th level spells. Charm monster is like charm person without the humanoid restriction, so you can get dragons on your side or whatever doomsday is. Well, I guess I built doomsday, so he is a humanoid, but there's some weird stuff in the DC universe. 8th level wizards get another ability score improvement. Keep getting your intelligence higher. Almost all of your spells depend on saving throws, so getting them harder to resist is pretty important. Scoop up counter spells at this level, letting you shut down third level spells automatically or higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spells level. Another reason to get better modifiers there, better force fields. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells like telekinesis, which lets you lift objects weighing a thousand pounds or less with your mind for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. If that object is a puny human, they can make a strength saving throw against your intelligence, but if they fail, they're restrained and you can move them another 30 feet with your action every turn. Or just drop a safe on the flash. He is not going to be able to lift it. It's not like he can vibrate every molecule in his body to move through matter. Wait, he can do that? And Captain Boomerang fights him? 10th level enchantment wizards get split enchantment, letting you target two creatures with your enchantment spells instead of one, which applies to dominate person. A spell that lets you take control of a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw for a minute, giving them simple commands they'll follow, or taking direct control with your action if they're just not doing it right. They can reroll the saving throw when they take damage, otherwise you're gonna have control over them for a minute, depending on your concentration. And now you can use this on two members of Justice League. Hopefully it's Superman and Martian Manhunter, not Green Arrow and Batman, but you know, Take what you can get. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells like Mass Suggestion. It's basically suggestion, but for the masses. If by masses you mean 12 people. It also lasts for 24 hours and doesn't require concentration anymore, which means that you can take a long rest while the entire Justice League gathers every banana in the world. And then your spell slot will recover and you can cast it again. That's the real bananas part of this spell. 12 level wizards get another ability score improvement, letting you cap off your intelligence modifier and hopefully that will make your mass suggestion a little more effective. But if you don't want to use your intelligence modifier, Tensor's Transformation turns you into a melee fighter in 
one action. You get 50 temporary HP, proficiency with strength and constitution saving throws, an extra attack every round. Advantage on your attack rolls with weapons, you deal an extra 2d12 force damage with your weapon attacks, and you get proficiency with all weapons and armor, meaning you can throw on some gorilla plate and get to work with a club, glaive, or really anything. Heck, you can even add that 2d12 force damage to unarmed attacks, because those are weapon attacks even if they don't use a weapon, though you won't get advantage on the attack rolls because that's for attacks made with simple or martial weapons, which a fist isn't. Does that make sense? It shouldn't because it doesn't, but that's how the rules work. Anyway, after the spell ends, you have to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw or you're gonna suffer a level of exhaustion, but don't sweat it, this build is pretty good at taking days off. It's important to note you can't cast spells while you're using Tensor's Transformation, but they're still waiting for you to use as soon as the spell ends. Let's bounce over to fighters super quick. First level fighters can grab a fighting style. Unarmed fighting lets you deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage with an unarmed attack, or 1d8 with two free hands, and you deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage when you grapple someone, and an extra d4 when you attack a target that you have grappled. Great weapon fighting is the power building option for this build, but we don't power build, too bad. You also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action, so 1d10 plus one, I literally just wanted the fighting style, we're done with fighter. 13th level wizards can learn 7th level spells, but I don't like any of them for Grodd, so enjoy the spell slot. Use it for a mass suggestion that lasts 10 days. Sounds fun to me. Instead, grab Hold Monster, which is like Hold Person without the humanoid restriction, so you can even hold some of the wacky stuff Arthur is pulling out of the ocean. And because of split enchantment, you can hold two of those weird aqua beasties. It's really nice stuff. 14th level enchantment wizards get to alter memories, letting you make a creature forget that you charmed it, and if they fail an intelligence saving throw, lose all memory of the time you had them charmed for a number of hours equal to one plus your charisma modifier. People somehow forget working for you, maybe just remembering the name Grodd before going to Arkham. To be fair though, if somebody told me that Harambe brainwashed them to rob a bank, I might think they weren't thinking right either. For this level spell, Resilient Sphere from the fourth level creates a sphere that stores a creature of large or smaller inside for a minute. No attack rules or spell effects can get in or out. If the creature doesn't want to be put in your force field, they can make a dexterity saving throw to dive out of the way at the last second. Personally, I think the best bet is to just get a bunch of people defending you with your mass suggestion, then just chill inside your force field. The issue will either resolve itself or you'll just join the fight four rounds in at full health. Either way, things are looking good for the Grodd. 15th level wizards can learn 8th level spells. Dominate monster is like dominate person for any kind of creature, not just a humanoid, and it lasts for an hour. You're not limited to controlling human minds, and all the wacky stuff out there in the universe is just waiting for the right gorilla. 16th level wizards get another ability score improvement. More strength will make you better at using your transformation. I cannot point out enough times how incredibly busted that spell is just fully turning you into a fighter with no martial investment. For this level spell, we don't have any psychic damage, that's pretty dumb. Mind Spike is a second level spell that deals 3d8 psychic damage to a creature that fails a wisdom saving throw and also puts you in their head, meaning that they can't hide from you and you'll know their location for an hour depending on your concentration as long as they don't leave the same plane. It's definitely not your best concentration spell, but the Justice League is full to bursting with rogues, so preventing hiding might help you deal with the more bat-themed members. 17th level wizards get way more psychic damage with the spell Psychic Scream, which forces an intelligence saving throw on as many creatures as you want in a 90 foot range, dealing 14 d6 psychic damage and stunning creatures if they fail, half as much damage, and no stunning if they succeed. Stun targets remain stunned until they can pass the saving throw against your capped off intelligence modifier. Best of luck sounds more likely that you're just going to be able to beat them to death with your big gorilla arms. 18th level wizards get spell mastery, letting you pick a spell of first level and and second level to cast at will like cantrips. Shield is always a good option, effectively giving you a plus five permanent bonus to your AC if you don't mind skipping opportunity attacks because you used your reaction. Hold person lets you paralyze humanoids at will, which covers probably 90% of what you're gonna fight as Grodd, definitely useful. Our capstone is the 19th level of wizard for one last ability score improvement. Capping off your strength means that you will be able to truly hit like the beast you are. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have so many spells to just skip combat altogether with ways to charm people for an entire year with no concentration. You've also got plenty of ways to lock your enemies down, which would be helpful if they are the fastest man alive. Finally, Tensor's Transformation is just stupid. It lets you decide that you want to take a break from being a casting character to be a martial character, even though you can still cast all of your spells. 
For weaknesses, you're charm dependent, meaning that things that are fully immune to charming could be an issue for you. You're also low on health until you pop that transformation, sitting at around 120, which some of the builds can wipe out in a single round. Finally, dexterity is one of the most common saving throws in the game, and you're very bad at it, meaning that a fireball could set your fur on fire. But who's to say you're even going to be in the fight for that? Build an army of mind soldiers, send them out instead, then mop up everyone left over with your monkey might. Just watch out for constructs, they tend to resist charming, which makes you a little less amazing. Amazing. Sorry, I misspoke. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for the last polled video of 2020. Your options are Ant Man, Frank West, Merida, or Atsuko from Little Witch Academia. And sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.